Hi guys, today I have an interview with the founder of the lightweight Java game library, Caspian Prince. Caspian Prince, say hello. Hello. I'm drinking coffee, sorry. <laughs> Alright then, um, Caspian, why did you create the lightweight Java game library? Okay, um, long story short, I was working in television graphics for Associated Press Television News. Um, and I wanted to do some live television output, but the Java 2D libraries of the time were incredibly unreliable for the kind of extremely smooth animation that you need uh, for television output. So I thought I needed something that would that would match my existing skills, which just happened to have been Java for the previous four or five years at the time. So I wrote an OpenGL wrapper, uh, and the rest just went on from there. Nothing to do with games. <laughs> All right, then. Um, and this was back in 2003, right? No, no. Um, that was back in 2000, I think I actually 2000. started. 2000, wow, that's 12 years ago. Yeah. Uh, quite a long time ago. So um, what, how, how has the game industry or the library Java game library, Java development industry changed over the last uh, nine years? Uh, it's been pretty significant. I mean, the, the, the whole independent uh, development scene has exploded in the last, what, two or three years maybe. Um, so, I mean, that's been a fairly significant development. Um, more long ago than that, there was the, the golden age of downloaded games, which was back in about 2000, when any idiot could release just about anything and sell it and make a reasonable amount of money uh, just by virtue of it appearing on download.com. Remember that? No? No, I don't. Oh, yeah, that's how quickly things change. Download.com is now a waste of space. shouldn't even be on the internet. Um and then it moved on a bit, you know, things things have, have stepped forward incrementally in various ways. The appearance of the iPhone changed the indie game scene quite significantly as well. Um, but as far as the Java game scenes happened, uh, almost nothing has occurred in the last 12 years of any significance apart from Minecraft. All right, then, and how do you think it will be in, uh, say, the next five years? Uh, well, this is it's currently... Um, it, there's, as usual, anywhere where there's money to be found, there's uh, an explosion of interest followed by consolidation and a load of failures. Uh, and what we have now, we're, we're just starting the consolidation phase, uh, which would appear to be Steam completely taking over the PC market. So PC downloadables are practically dead um, to most developers. There are, there are ways, you know, there's the odd Minecraft here, there's the odd person eking out a living there with direct sales. But mostly, if you actually want to try and make any kind of living, um, it would appear that people just want to buy their games on Steam and nowhere else. And it doesn't help that Microsoft and various other places are making it difficult to download software onto your computer now from anywhere other than a few select gatekeepers, such as Steam or the Windows Store or the App Store or Amazon and so forth. All right, that's interesting. And now talking about a living, uh, what do you do for a living? Well, right now, uh, I write computer games, which is a little unexpected, because I wasn't expected to be doing it uh, just two years ago. I've always been a, just an ordinary IT contractor, just programming away whatever happens to come to hand. You know, I was a Java developer for quite a while, and uh, I ended up making games as a hobby, just by accident, it got successful. Now, which parts of the Lightweight Java game library have you written that are still in it today? Oh, I haven't a clue. It, I mean, it, it, it changes incrementally so often, you know, under the hood. I, if I looked at the source code now, I doubt I'd recognize any of it. I mean, the original code uh, was based on that uh, um, bits of GPL Quake 2 OpenGL setup code, and there was all sorts of hand-cranked uh, JNI code for accessing OpenGL methods and so on. And now a lot of it's auto-generated, but it's, it's changed a lot in the last 10 years. All right, then uh, the last question. What advice would you give to someone who's just starting out with uh, game programming? Um, oh. <laughs> My favorite advice to give is don't, because I don't want a competition. Um, ooh, that's very tricky. That I th if, if you're of a mind to start writing a game, then you probably need to understand just how much work it is. And most people vastly underestimate just how much work it really is to make even a really trivial looking little game like Titan Attacks. Um, the other thing you probably underestimate is just how hard graphics are to do right. You need somebody who knows how to do graphics. If you're a programmer and you think you can do art, you probably can't. 
okay, if you're a programmer and you, you try and make your own art for your own game, it's probably going to look rubbish. Uh, my advice to any beginning games developer is to find an artist and work with them. Because not only will you bounce ideas off each other and actually have some good art to show at the end of your game, um, you'll motivate each other to actually try and complete the project as well. Because when you work on your own, you, give, you tend to give up because nobody's going. you haven't got any investment in anyone else. If somebody else is investing their time in you and you're investing your time in them, then you really want to finish something because otherwise you let each other down. Uh, so that's a very strong motivator for getting something done. Because the enemy of 99% of all games that are ever started is that they are not finished because people get bored and stop. And there we go. Yeah. So how would you find uh, how would you find people to work with then? Last question. Well, I was kind of lucky. Uh, Chaz, um, who's who's the Puppy Games other half, uh, I've known since we were about 12 years old. So I've known him for uh, 27, 28 years or something like that since school. Um, it does help to know somebody really well because artists are notoriously fickle. They, you know, say they'll do art and then vanish and never see them again or they'll do a few pictures, get bored and you'll never see them again and so on and so on. It helps if you really know somebody before you try and start working with them. All right, then. Um, thanks. And no problem. All uh, right, then. This was anything the interview. else you've got to ask off the record? <laughs> uh, not really. Well, this was the interview with, with Caspian Prince. Uh, you can check out his website, puppygames.net. Is it com or net? Puppygames.net. Puppy Link will be in the description. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye. Cheerio.